I now look to Dr. Dr. Christian Jessen to continue the case for the proposition. Until you've seen Fernando's fist fuck frenzy four, you haven't lived. <laughs> I bet those words have never been said in this chamber before. Um, I'd like to start off by um, saying how nice it is to actually talk to a group of people with their clothes on for once. <laughs> thank you for your restraint. Well, thanks to some of you for your restraint, let's put it that way. Um, I'd also like to clarify a point that seems to have confused televiewing audiences for some time now. I am actually a real doctor. I'm not an actor, as I'm so often asked. And I'm not a doctor in a Gillian McKeith sort of way either. Um, I did actually really go to medical school, and I do currently work every week doing clinics in genitourinary and in psychosexual medicine, which has an obvious salience tonight. Um, if you want further proof, just ask my neighbour Sally, who I overheard describing me as that chap off the telly who's so good with willies. <laughs> if only she knew. Um. <laughs> Everything you've just heard from the opposition, I would argue, is a reason why porn must be included in the sex education in schools. And it's a subject that's of particular relevance to me in my medical practice because I see every week in my clinic the consequences of poor or non-existent sex education and of not teaching young people about porn. And I'm going to give you some real examples and some recent examples of actual patients of mine in a bit. At the risk of seeming rather pedantic, I do want to just take issue with the summary of this debate that occurs in your advertising on the website. Um, in case you haven't read it, you might not have done, it says, with over 60% of young people today turning to pornography in search of information on sexual activity <gasps> that they are not taught in school, we can no longer consider it a taboo. Well, I think that 60% is rather <laughs> misleading to start with. Let me give you some more relevant stats. 94% of children have seen porn by the age of 14. Of that 94%, over a quarter first saw explicit content when they were only 11 or 12 years old. Pornhub is listed as one of the top five favorite websites of British boys aged between 11 and 16. The smears on my iPad would attest to that. <laughs> 12% of 11 to 16 year olds have made or been part, 12% of 11 to 16 year olds have made or been part of a sexually explicit video. One in 10 British teens aged 12 to 13 are concerned that they're addicted to pornography. Only 3% of boys have never seen porn, so they say. <laughs> The next part of the advertising blurb says, can pornography offer important educational benefits for teenagers, helping uh, to develop their emerging sexual identities? Or does it only offer an unrealistic version of sexuality that contributes to dangerous misconceptions about sexual pleasure? Well, it's precisely the hypotheses posed in the latter part of that question and not the former that is why it's vital that porn has a place in the curriculum. Unguided, uncensored and often accidental exposure to pornography can lead to long-lasting psychosexual problems. Many young people now struggle to have sexual relationships or they avoid them altogether because all of their sexual experiences have happened online. Men come to me seeking penis enlargement surgery. They come to me looking for treatment for premature ejaculation, for help with body image issues, for help with low self-esteem, in most cases, those have been induced by watching pornography. Our best efforts to teach about consent and no means no are thwarted as evidenced by the 87% of boys and 77% of girls who report pornography failed to help them understand what consent meant. And in fact, the majority of boys see it as a realistic depiction of sex. One patient of mine, She's now in her 20s. She had her first sexual experience with her boyfriend when she was 14. 
and it was anal sex, because that's what they'd seen in porn, and that's what they believed um, that you did. It left her with some terrible injuries. About the same time, she started wearing corsets and fishnets because that's what women did to look attractive in the pornography that she's seen. She's now utterly unable to have sex or to form relationships of any sort because of that early, unguided experience. Another young patient of mine is on antidepressants and, and having regular psychotherapy because her first sexual experience with her boyfriend involved him holding her by her hair, I won't actually do the actions, um, holding by her hair and violently choking her with his penis during oral sex because again, this is what he'd seen in porn and this is what he genuinely believed was what girls liked and what you did. And guess where he got that belief from? Um, soon to speak for the opposition um, is somebody who um, served on the ch as children's commissioner. I may have got the details wrong as we spoke earlier on this about who exactly did what, but I'm going to quote some, many of the statistics that I quoted to you earlier actually came from their own survey. Um, I think it was your successor, Anne Longfield. Um, who stated publicly, and I quote, that we must do all do more to help children who see porn to understand what they have seen. We know from the research that very many children are shocked, confused and disgusted by what they see and it is our duty to help them to question, to challenge and to make sense of it. So how possibly can we do that if porn is not part of the sex ed curriculum. I think in that statement that she makes, she very persuasively argues for the proposition. It is reasonable to assume that all kids will see porn. If you're a parent and you think your child is not watching porn, you are being naive and very, very misguided. And so they do need to be properly prepared for what they might see, for the violence, for the apparent lack of consent, for the unrealistic bodies, for the breast sizes, the penis sizes, the duration of intercourse, the very male-focused orgasm, the, what was the word you used? The clitorocentric, did you say? The clitoracy, the clitoracy. They need to be told that this is not the norm. If you don't tell them, you cannot assume that they will work this out for themselves. An uninformed child is a vulnerable child. Don't take the Daily Mail reader approach to teaching about porn, which is to put your feelings over the facts. To do so, I would argue, is to woefully to negligently let down our children and to potentially instigate a lifetime of sexual problems or even criminal convictions. And I'm quite sure that this House will see no other sensible and responsible alternative but to support the motion that porn must have a place in sex education. Thank you.